Hello everyone, Loco Vols here and welcome back to a, another Railway Model Store review video. This week we're taking a look at Hornby's BR460 B17-2 Welbeck Abbey. So, as always, take a look at the box. Standard Hornby box, got the picture on the front, information down the bottom, logos, minimum radius, top, uh, just shows the top of the Loco, bottom uh, features all of the different languages and such. Uh, this side features more information, including the um, SKU code, which is R3448. And also we can see that it is DCC ready. And on the other side, we just have a Hornby logo. In 1926, with increased loading on the East Anglia passenger services and the introduction of modern vacuum brake coaching stock, there was a desperate need for a locomotive that could supplement the Holden B12 class on the former Great Eastern routes of the London North Eastern Railway. Track limitations prevented the transfer of locomotives from other regions, and so Nigel Gresley was tasked by the LNER to produce a three-cylinder 460 design, using a cylinder and motion arrangement of the D49, with tractive effort of about £25,000 and a relatively light axle loading of 17 tonnes. The resulting Class B17 design arose from Doncaster Works' inability to completely satisfy Gresley's specification, and the resulting contract for the detailed design and building of the class was in 1927 given to the North British Locomotive Company in Glasgow. Using some of the features from the batch of A1 Pacific locomotives they had built in 1924, along with some features from the Royal Scott class produced for the LMS, the cab cylinders and motion were all copied or directly modified, while most of the boiler design was taken from the Class K3 and Class O2 designs. Darlington Works assisted by providing drawings for the bogies, with Stratford Works providing the design for the Great Eastern prototype, 37,000 gallon tender. Locomotive 61619 Welbeck Abbey entered service on November 8, 1930, having built at Darlington in the first batch of B17-2 locomotives, and was converted to a B17-6 in January 1953, whilst allocated to March Shed. Renumbered under British Railways in August 1948 to 61619, Welbeck Abbey was withdrawn from service on September 19, 1958. Okay, so here she is out of the box. This is a 61619 Wellberg Abbey, which is a B17-2. It is finished in BR lined green. Uh, so you've got the uh, black and orange striping around the tender, around the cab and down the boiler. You have the associated pipes on the boiler. Lining is on the running board as well as the wheel arches. Above one of the wheel arches is obviously the name of the loco, which is printed and then obviously separately fitted onto there. Um, it's got some very complicated looking valve gear, which again, as with the K1 we saw last week, should look quite good down on the layout, so I'm looking forward to that. Along the front we've got a decent amount of rivets, rivets along the buffer beams, um, we've got um, whistles down the back there, nearer to the cab. Again, with the K1 we have this sort of... Um, rubbish-ish looking wing mirror or whatever the train equivalent is which just looks a bit strange molded on there um, but maybe that is just how they were in real life I've never seen one of these one of the cool features about this one that I noticed is it's got an opening um, thing in the roof here um, so I think that's a pretty cool little thing adds a tiny little bit of playability to it I guess if that's how you want to put it you can also see there's a red wheel on the buffer, uh, sorry, not the buffer, on the tender there. So it's got quite a nicely detailed tender actually compared to the other ones we've had a look at. Uh, again, with some pretty realistic coal on there, uh, lining, and then the logo as well there. Uh, not so much detail um, down here, not as many rivets as we've seen on some of the other models. Um, but that's just how it is. It just depends between models, really, isn't it? 
Um, there's a few rivets on the cab. We've got rivets just around this area on the roof. Um, we've got a another one of these metal bars going across here that we saw uh, again on the K1. I think they were both built um, at North British Locomotive Works up in Glasgow, so that's probably just one of their standard designs, I assume. Um, so we're going to take a look at the back now in closer detail and have a look inside the cab. Okay, so if we look at it from the back here, we can sort of see inside the cab a bit better. And this is probably one of the best bits about Hornby's steam locos. The, the inside of the engine is properly, it's all painted. There's loads of pipes in there, loads of details, brakes, reverses, all picked out in different colours. Um, so it's properly detailed on the inside of the cab, which I really like. And again, like I mentioned earlier, there's this little thing on the roof. Um, which is positionable. Um, I'm not sure what that's for, um, but I like the fact that it's there. It's something that can be moved on it. It adds a little bit of customizability, I suppose. Um, so if you just take a quick look at the tender, um, we can see it's got uh, the head code um, attachment points. There's no lining on the back here, um, but that might have just been how it is. Uh, again, we've got sprung buffers, as we have had with all of the Hornby steam engines I've been taking a look at. Uh, we've got handrails, um, we've got these two, uh, op well, these would open in real life, obviously they don't open on the model, um, but that's where the water would go in. And as again, as I mentioned earlier, we've got some quite nice realistic coal. I think Hornby do pretty well uh, with their coal, um, but I haven't really got anything to compare it with. Uh, the tenders... Well, to me, it seems like a sort of strange design. Um, there's like an there's like an extra pipe going down the side here, so the coal's all shifted to one side. So it's not symmetrical or anything, but again, it's just how it is in real life. I just thought I'd mention it because it looks a little bit strange to me. So what we're going to do now is going to take it down to the layout and give it a bit of a run. Okay, so as you can see, we're done on the layout now. Uh, it runs very nicely, very smoothly. I'll put it on my tighter radius just to see how it copes. And there's no derailing of the bogies or anything. I was expecting the tender maybe to be a bit annoying, but it's fine. As you can see, the valve gear looks awesome. If you're wondering why it looks a little bit weird on the top of the um, boiler, uh, that's due to the way that Hornby packaged things. Uh, it's due to a little bit of plastic, the plastic wrapping that they put inside the box. Um, but it's easy to get rid of, so no worries about that. Would I get one of these myself? No, it's just not my era, not my sort of engine. I'd rather get a, a Great Western 460 myself. Um, but overall, I think it's a pretty solid model. It's got a decent amount of detail. It runs brilliantly. Um, so if you want a nice solid runner, then I highly recommend this. Um, especially if you're modelling Eastern Region, maybe London North Eastern Region. If I was going to get one, I'd get one in like LNER livery. Because uh, I'm not a fan of British Railways myself. Um, but yeah. So that's that. Hopefully that's the last steam train I've got to review for a while. Because I'm sick of them, to be completely honest. And I'm hoping I can get some nice diesels in for us to take a look at over the next few weeks. So yeah, links will be down below for this. And uh, yeah, make sure you click on that. And buy it through us at Railway Model Store. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching, remember to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.